For those of you in the back row, yes, this is Baby Dog. He took the governor out for a walk today and they wound up here. Well, again, welcome everybody. Our first speaker today, he began his career in the bridge department with the West Virginia Division Highways and that's where his passion is, bridges. So today he's right at home on the, the newest and the most famous, already famous bridge in West Virginia. He is the commissioner of the West Virginia Division of Highways, as well as the Secretary of Transportation. Please welcome Secretary Jimmy Riston. Thank you, Randy. Wow. Wow. Decades and decades and decades in the making. And once again, the governor is here to cut a ribbon on a project that lingered and lingered and lingered. How many people in this audience has put in licks on this bridge? I mean, for gosh sakes. I'd like to I'd like to recognize each and every one of you guys that have worked on this thing. Some of you, there's people here that worked on this project in 1948. Can you believe that? 1948. And one of the things that I get asked, and I've been asking all week, you know, we've done quite a few interviews about, about the coming <laughs> opening of the bridge and the ceremony today. The biggest question I've been asked is, okay, why now? Why now? The answer is very simple. In 2016, we elected the most dynamic governor we have ever had who had a vision. A vision to put transportation at the forefront of our economic recovery, to transform our economy, to diversify our economy, and to build the infrastructure that West Virginians and now Ohioans also deserve and appreciate. We have struggled. I mean, I, I really would like to like like to mention each individual that worked on this bridge because it's been a long, long time coming. What I, if if I did that and I had a list up here, it would stretch probably all the way across the 1,875 feet of the bridge. It would at least go the 830 feet of the main span for sure, maybe twice. But uh, so so what I will do is I will say for each and every one of you, county commissioners local folks, legislators, all the people that met with the Department of Highways, with our um, Ohio Department of Transportation folks, with, uh, with our great contractor who did a wonderful job here. Well done, well done folks, well done. Governor, once again, once again, we're, we're going to cut a ribbon on a, on a project thanks to your big, bold vision for Roads to Prosperity. This project was funded with federal aid dollars that were freed up because of the vision he had to bring a bond program to, to the public that overwhelmingly agreed with him, overwhelmingly saw that he had the answer, and we got it done. We got it done. We know the value of our infrastructure. You're going to see the value of this piece of infrastructure for the next hundred years. For the next hundred years. The people in Brilliance, Ohio, the people in Wellsburg, West Virginia, will now, instead of, if you live in Wellsburg and work in Brilliant, or vice versa, that 40-minute drive every, every morning and every evening, starting tomorrow, five minutes. Five minutes. I, I think I am on a timer here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to the, to, the, to the guy you really wanted to hear from. And it is my great honor to introduce to you the 36th governor of the great state of West Virginia, Governor Justice. Well, I know you really would a whole lot rather hear from Baby Dog than me. But, uh, you know, she did come. She's really proud to be here. It's an incredible day. But if you'll just look, just look at who we are. Just look at absolutely all of you. You're the engine. You made it happen. You made it happen over and over and over and over throughout all kinds of different things. Now, there's lots and lots and lots of dignitaries here, and I could introduce till I'm tired of introducing. And I'm not going to do that. 
The reason I'm not going to do that is not because you're in, not incredibly important, because you are. But absolutely, at the end of the day, the most important of all are those kids back there, or the kids over here. All of you, all of you are just that. Now listen to me on this, and I, I've got to tell you just this. I really give the credit for all the good ideas that I may come up with to the good Lord, period. Period. Now, I'll take the credit for the bad ideas that I come up with. But I'll give him all the credit for the good ideas. There was a point in time when I was going to be your governor, and I absolutely sat and thought, well, what in the world are we going to do? Then they gave me a set of books, and in all honesty, we were so upside down and so bankrupt, it was off the chart. And then, truly, the idea just came out of nowhere. I said, I've got to be able to create an instant job, an instant job. I can't build a field and hope that somebody will come. I've got to create instant jobs because we have got to have people and revenue and all the stuff that goes with it. And then really I was in the shower and I thought, wonder, just wonder what it would cost to let every road job that's on the books, any and everything that we have, what would it cost us? And really then we had to find a way to pull it off and do it. And the road bond passed by right at 73% of the vote. Again, you. You decided what we were going to do. And off we went. And we don't need to pat any of us on the back and keep patting on the back. What we need to do is just recognize the fact that all of y'all probably got something... You've got things you could be doing right now, and look what you're doing. You're here because this is really important to all of us, to all of us. I mean, I frankly don't know the people of Brilliant or the people of Wellsburg. I don't know what you're going to do all day now. I mean, my God, a living. You just think, really, of the time you're going to have on your hands, and what are you going to do? You know, and it's really good stuff. Life will be better. Life will be better because of a lot of people. Not Jim Justice solely by any stretch of the imagination. Life will be better from all the dignitaries, all the people that put in the licks forevermore. But life will be better because of you. I could not be happier. It is an incredible day. Your being here is testimony to you and how great you are. Now, Baby Dog and I, when we're done, we'll stay here, and if you want to come by and say hi, you will can for a while. But she gets hot, and she just can't take it anymore. So with all that being said, really what she's trying to signal me is because we're on the same dietary program, yeah, y'all didn't need to laugh about that. But really and truly, she wants to go get chicken nuggets. Listen, I love you with all my soul. You know, there's nothing really fancy about me, but honest to God, the thing I'll do, and I'll do it to my grave, I'll never tell you anything but the truth. There's been a lot of great people that have been in a lot of licks, and you have too. And so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless each and every one of you. I love you with all my soul. <laughs> and thank you, baby doll. You have a chance to take some pictures here. We're going to move off the stage in a few minutes to the ribbon. And then, the, as you heard, the governor will rejoin us on stage. Chance for you to meet baby dog up close and personal. Well, the contractor chosen to build this bridge was, of course, you know, determined by the lowest bidder. However, the West Virginia Division of Highways was the true winner with a company who we had not worked with before. Well, they proposed building this structure, <laughs> you know the story, they proposed building it on the ground about a mile up the river and then putting it on a barge 
and floating it to this position and then raising it to the piers, which by the way, check your history, that was the heaviest lift in North America when that occurred. You can Google that or not sure that's still the case, but at that time, three years ago, it was indeed a big deal. I'm glad I was able to do that. Nothing short of an engineering marvel. From Flatiron, please welcome Jim Schleiderman. Thank you, Randy. Wow, what a turnout. This is, I've been to quite a few of these, and this is by far the biggest turnout I've ever been to. So on behalf of Flatiron and our entire construction team, I'm really excited to be here today for this, just this awesome celebration. Projects like this are not easy, and we are so proud to have been part of the Wellsburg Bridge. I'm very grateful for everyone who helped us get to this point. So there are just a few groups of people I want to thank. First of all, and probably most importantly, thank you to our union workforce. You men and women have been amazing, and we will take you in here. We are forever grateful for all your hard work. Next, thank you to our partners at w, uh, West Virginia WDOH, ODOT, and Stantec. I know it, it wasn't easy, but I think we can be proud of what we accomplished together. Thank you to our design partner, RSNH, and all your sub consultants. Thank you to all of our local subs and suppliers. We obviously could not have done this without you. And then thank you to our talented Flatiron employees who helped manage this very complex project. And last, but certainly not least, thank you to the wonderful people of Wellsburg and Brilliant for putting up with us for so long. This bridge is for you, and we certainly hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Well, building roads and bridges in West Virginia indeed requires partnerships, and the West Virginia Division of Highways works closely with the Federal Highway Administration daily for the benefit of our citizens. Please welcome from the Federal Highway Administration, the West Virginia Administrator, Mr. Jeff Blatton. Hello. On behalf of the Federal Highway Administration, I'd just like to say it's a truly a pleasure to be here today. Uh, and I'm like Governor Justice, I'm like Baby Dog, I'm getting a little hot under the collar here. So, um, when Randy asked us to give notes today and speak, uh, we kind of started delving back through our records. And, and of course, we're fortunate to have a lot of uh, long standing employees who have worked in this area, myself included. Uh, and kind of looking back at what the impact of what this bridge means to this this region, what it means to the people, uh, and, and what it's going to mean to the economy of this area. And so kind of what we came down to was we could, we could summarize it in three Ps. Uh, the first of that would be persistence. I think as you know, a large project like this doesn't happen overnight. And it takes a lot of time, effort, and money. Um, I think as I heard on a local news report, uh, a few days ago, this bridge has been talked about for uh, basically a hundred years. So that was nice context to understand how long a bridge has been needed in this region. Uh, more recently, say the last 25 to 30 years, uh, BHJ and I, I've had personal history working with the MPO here, the Brooke Hancock Jefferson MPO. Uh, they were consistently listing this project as their top transportation priority. So they kept on the pressure and kept uh, that with all the elected officials as well. And eventually we got to this day. So that was um, very helpful to get us to the part where we could build a bridge across the river here. Um, again, I'd also like to particularly recognize the staff of the, over the years of the Brooke Hancock Jefferson MPO, uh, their efforts went a long way to getting us here today, and I would particularly like to acknowledge uh, the former executive director, Dr. John Brown, I, I saw Dr. Brown there a few minutes ago, as well as the successor, Mike Paprocki. Uh, without their vision and drive, we may have not have got here to this day, great day. Uh, the second P is partnership, and this bridge is a true example of what a partnership can do. Uh, as Randy mentioned, we work very closely with our partners, 
and we value those partnerships. And on this bridge, you know, a lot of people put in time and effort to get there. Obviously, BHJ was one, ODOT, which you'll hear from next, uh, the Division of Highways for West Virginia, uh, Federal Highways in both Ohio and West Virginia, and local officials. Uh, they all played a part in the development and planning to get to this stage, and then that transferred to construction. So uh, that continued with the contractor, the consultant, and the state inspectors. Uh, so with all this, without this partnerships and the many ones that were formed for this bridge, we wouldn't be standing here today. And the last P would be pride, and that would be the pride that my staff has observed for this reason, for all these people who are uh, involved with the project over the years. Um, and I think my staff particularly uh, made remarks about this, the pride they felt from everybody who's been involved with this project over the years. Um, lastly, I would like to thank my staff, personally at the Federal Highway Administration in both Ohio and West Virginia. Uh, we, again, we really truly value our partnerships and this is a good example of the work that our staffs do to help support our state DOT so they can deliver the federal aid program. So with that, I would invite you to enjoy the rest of the day. A uh, lot of festivities still to go and enjoy this bridge for the generations to come and all the connections that uh, will result from it. Thank you. Okay, I've got, to, I've got to do two things. One thing that I forgot that is tremendously important to me, and I'm sure it's important to you, and I'm sure it's really important to all the folks in Ohio. Governor DeWine, you know, I hoped was going to be able to be here with us, and now he's got COVID, and so please keep him in your prayers and everything. You know, we, we want a good, vibrant governor and everything, and we want him right back and re real back and back real, real, real soon. And the other thing, Randy, is before you go any further, I gotta give baby dog a drink. You may want to take a picture of this, folks. <laughs> Just saying. Our next speaker is from the Ohio Department of Transportation. He's the District 11 Deputy Director. Please welcome Mr. Tom Corey, 27-year veteran. Tom. Thank you, thank you, Randy. Thank you so much. And the governor, thank you, Governor DeWine. Um, this is a special day for me as well because uh, I used to be Jefferson County Manager for ODOT back in 2004, 2011, and I see a lot of familiar faces out here as I walked up across the bridge. And I'm joined by a large ODOT contingent here that uh, a lot of us worked here in Jefferson and heard about this uh, being built way back when. And to be standing here today, it is a personal uh, career honor to be standing here. I'm also honored to be standing here on behalf of Governor DeWine, which couldn't make it today, obviously, and Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor John Husted, and of course my boss, Director Jack Marchbanks. Uh, the construction of the Wellsburg Bridge will have a lasting impact of, on lives of millions for years and years to come. Transportation is a vital aspect of our daily routines, and this project aligns with ODOT's mission to provide a transportation system that is safe, accessible, well-maintained, and positioned for the future. This bridge connects West Virginia and Ohio, bringing together two states with a long, long history of collaboration up and down along the river. This project aims to facilitate the movement of people and resources, creating new opportunities for all that have already been talked about today. The Wellsburg Bridge is the first new bridge over the Ohio River in a nearby vicinity, and its completion is a significant achievement for the transportation infrastructure while benefiting the local communities by promoting economic growth and development. Additionally, this bridge includes a multimodal aspect in having a pedestrian and bicycle path that leads from Brilliant over to Wellsburg and join the Brook Pioneer Trail just across the river which is part of a magnificent rail trail that West Virginia has that stretches from Wellsburg clear to uh, Weirton. 
The success of any major project hinges on dependability of its partners, and we are incredibly fortunate to have exceptional partners for this specific project. This undertaking has been in planning stages for quite some time before construction ever began, as was talk mentioned earlier. I personally and ODOT sincerely appreciate the Brook Hancock Jefferson Metropolitan Planning Commission for its invaluable assistance. BHA was relentless and very instrumental in seeing this project through from this inception when studies were first initiated well back in the 90s and early 2000s to today when we're cutting the ribbon. Their unwavering dedication and steadfast commitment were crucial to this project becoming a reality. I would be remiss if I did not recognize one of ODOT's own. I also want to recognize our project engineer, Mr. Adam Litton, and his unwavering dedication and steadfast commitment to overseeing this project on behalf of the state of Ohio and working hand in glove with our partners in West Virginia daily to achieve this great monumental uh, ribbon cutting. ODOT expresses our gratitude for the opportunity to collaborate with the West Virginia Department of Transportation. This landmark achievement is a shining example of how teamwork, excellence, and engineering can make a significant impact in moving people and goods from place to place. Today is a monumental occasion for our transportation agencies, but most importantly for the communities of Brilliant and Wellsburg, we, ODOT, is honored to be part of this and take part in this remarkable accomplishment and to celebrate with all of you today. Thank you for having me. All right, next speaker. With remarks, no strangers to the West Virginia Panhandle. He represents the first district in the West Virginia Senate. Please welcome Mr. Ryan Weld. Good afternoon, everybody. Look at this crowd, look around for a second. I know that my friends in Fayette County might argue with me a little bit, but today is Bridge Day in the state of West Virginia. It is so wonderful to see all of you here today. So many friends from Charleston have come up for it. Governor Justice, thank you for being here today. I saw my friend Delegate Moore Capito from Charleston. He was here today, wanted to see the, the celebration. You know, it was May 24th, 1883, so almost 140 years ago to the day that the Brooklyn Bridge was opened. And the people of Manhattan had a tremendous celebration. And they had marching bands and musicals and speeches by politicians and dignitaries and fireworks. And at the end of it, they all got together and they marched together across the bridge and they found on the other side was Brooklyn. And so I'm, I say that, but I'm very happy to be connected to, to Ohio and to everyone over in Ohio. You know, there was a newspaper article that I read recently. It was in the Herald Star. It said, construction of the bridge to begin immediately. Except that article was from November of 1928. And so, Governor, if this bridge is going to last 100 years, we better start working on the next one now. <laughs> Jimmy, since you're here, too, we'll talk later. And so through the years, there have been so many groups of people that have tried to get this to fruition in the 20s, in the 30s, in the 60s. In the current iteration, that group started 30 years ago to get us to where we are here today. And think about that, that we are finally linked, Wellsburg and Brilliant, West Virginia and Ohio. And just what a tremendous honor it is to be able to represent this area, to be your senator on this day. In 100 years, this has been going on, and I get to be your senator today and be here. I just can't tell you what an honor that is. So there are a lot of people to thank, but there's one group in particular that I want to thank. People that I saw every day when I drove past here to go to work or come home. If you worked on this bridge when it was 20 degrees in the middle of January, if you were out here when it was pouring the rain in the middle of the summer, or if it was 95 degrees, thank you because you all made this happen. You all were the ones that built this bridge. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, again, it is a terrific honor, and I will see everybody at the food trucks later. Thank you all so much. Yeah, I'll join you too, Senator. That's just part of the excitement. We'll talk about that in a moment. Our last speaker is also no stranger to the panhandle. He was a political science major, and the reason I mentioned that, quote, he got interested in politics because I've always wanted and had an interest in serving 
the county, unquote. He represents District 3 in our legislature. Would you please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Jimmy Willis. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I have to admit, speaking after Governor Justice and Senator Well and all these great speakers is a lot of tough acts to follow. So I will be brief so we can get baby dog out of the sun. Um, I would like to echo the sentiments we've heard today, thanking the company Flatiron, uh, West Virginia Department of Highways, Ohio Department of Transportation for all the great work and effort they've put here in, into this bridge. And I would like to thank the Wellsburg Chamber of Commerce and everyone who has planned and spent hours upon hours upon hours trying to get this day set up. And I think they've done a pretty good job of it. What does everybody think? Now, the one thing I would like to mention today, and I would like to challenge somebody, no one in particular, that after we do cut this ribbon, that someone takes the place of the late great Sue Simonetti and dances across this bridge after we cut the ribbon and get it officially open. If somebody would do that, I would appreciate it so much. Uh, thank you for everybody uh, for being here today, and uh, let's cut this ribbon. What do we think? Okay, this is where the, um, the picture taking comes in. We're going to come down off the stage and go to the ribbon, but there are a lot of people, I, and I don't have names, a lot of people need to be in this picture. I know the Chamber of Commerce, we've got our Flatiron representatives, there's some DOH people. So if you'll start coming this way now uh, to get behind the ribbon. Now, after we cut the ribbon, there's a second ceremony this afternoon, about 1.30, right here on the stage. You'll hear from some uh, local speakers as well. So I hope you'll stay around. As he mentioned, food trucks. There are a couple of car shows going on across the river in Ohio, so please help yourself and enjoy the bridge today. Governor? Okay, y'all gonna have to park the seat a little bit here because I'm the only one with a pair of scissors. <laughs> We'd have given all y'all scissors, but we don't trust you. Thank you. 